Hello. They're shutting my the door, so I guess I'll go ahead and start, or at least say hello. So I have perpetual technical failure today, and the mic's not working, but I have a theater background, so if I can't hit the back of the wall by speaking loudly, then I don't, you know, I have 99 problems, but being quiet is not one of them. So um, my name is Sarah. I'm going to be talking about value ladders today and why your business needs one. So if you think that your business doesn't need one, or maybe this isn't the right track for you, feel free to step out. No hard feelings, I promise. Also, um, if you want to, if you have questions during the presentation, feel free to ask. We, I'll just be talking throughout, so don't feel like you need to save them all till the end. Okay, if you have anything in spe specific. Um, okay, so again, I'm Sarah. Um, I have my own web design agency called Sarah K Design that I founded when I found myself a divorced homeschooling mom of five and needed to figure out what the heck to do after being out of the business world for about 10 years. So I took my um, background in arts management and now I help small business owners grow big ideas and connect with their clients through strategic web design and converting sales funnels. So if any of that resonates with you, yay. Um, one of the first steps when I'm onboarding a new client is mapping out their value ladder because without a goal of where you want to go, you can't create the path to get there. Okay, so that's what we're gonna kind of talk about, how we're gonna get you to your goal using a value ladder. So let's just go ahead and dive in. And I, so with the show of hands, <laughs> show of hands, who has actually heard the term value ladder before? Woohoo! All right, who actually has one for their business? Yay! Okay, well, we can do a little workshopping today too and kind of talk about some stuff. And hopefully, the presentation today will jog some ideas for you. And maybe, and some of the questions that will be generated will help solidify some ideas in your mind. Okay? So, let's just go on. I said right on the WordCamp page, I'm not going to keep you in suspense much longer. For those that don't know what a value ladder is, it is an easy and effective way to do three things. Number one, structure your business to appeal to the different phases of your client's business growth. When you get a new client, they may not be a company that has 10 employees, 50 employees. They might be a startup, just, just need a website right or just need some services that you offer so as you have products that meet them at different levels then you're going to appeal to them at the phases of their business growth number two it will help scale your revenue through an easily consumable and naturally progressive process those are all really big words okay. um, number three it will ensure that you have products and services that fit all of your current clients' needs. So go back to thinking about your solopreneur startup to they already have a burgeoning law practice, okay? You're going to create products that speak to them where they are at. Here's some different examples of <coughs> rungs or steps in your value ladder. So many times the entry point for a value ladder is a freebie or a discount code, something that you're going to get a, give away um, in order for them to engage with you, to trust you with their email address maybe. And from there we start building a relationship. Maybe you're going to do an email challenge, a webinar, an ebook, memberships, Podcast, courses, workshops, coaching, done for you services. Sky's the limit, guys. Okay? Sky's the limit. So, as you can think of it, these are the examples, just some that we can use. Some of these, depending on what you want to do with them, can be paid. Some can be a higher price point that 
maybe I might put a higher price point on my course than my coaching or vice versa. Okay, these are just ideas to start generating in your brain how, what are some of the products you can offer to your clients to meet them at their various levels of business growth. So here's some examples. Okay, so let's say I have a client who's a health coach. They want, this would be a very basic idea of a value ladder for a health coach. The idea of a value ladder, of course, is that it's going to go up to the higher price points and that we're going to have an easily consumable step-by-step -step as we go along. So you come to their website, they're giving away a free ebook. Okay, maybe it's uh, my top 50 keto-friendly desserts. Okay. Um, okay, that's cool. I like a freebie. I'll give you my email address. All right. Now, they, you're, you're sending them, you know, email sequence. They're starting to work with you. They don't have any money. Yeah, I don't know. You know, but they decide, I like you. I'm going to invest a little bit more in you. Still, my budget is limited, but I really want to work with you. So you say, hey, I've got this uh, monthly Facebook group, $10 or five, monthly membership, whatever. See how this is starting to go? So they invest in you some more because you have scaled your business to have a product at where they're at in their business growth. So it keeps going. Get higher and higher um, ticket pricing items for your own business and it helps meet the need where they're at in their business. So if you were to attach, let's just say like some dollar amounts to it, like I just threw some numbers out there, please don't just be like, I would never pay that, or boy, you should charge more. Okay, no, just ignore that. But you can see how if you have a client that is just starting out, um, or you know, a customer that's just starting out, this might be a little more feasible for them, okay? But you have somebody that is ready to really take their business to the next level and they're going to invest in you because they've been all along the journey with you and they're ready to pay. They want one-on-one -on -one coaching. They recognize your authority and you have a very consumable path to take them on, okay? So we have several designers in the group. Let's just think about value ladder that you might use in your business starts with just a blog post, okay? Just talking about giving away value and knowledge. Then maybe you're going to upsell them to some already done for you social media templates on Canva. You know, okay, that's really, that's easy, I could do that. <coughs> I liked her work, that was a really good blog post. You know, okay. Maybe you've got a course. I'll teach you how to take those media, social media images in Canva and make them your own. And I'll even throw in some special fonts and a brand board template. We're walking them up the value ladder. And as we're doing that, it's meeting their needs where they're at, and it is also generating more revenue for you. Then we're gonna get them on a business strategy call, we're gonna upsell them, get them a new shiny new website, then build out their whole sales funnel, okay? so. Just one example of how you could structure a value ladder. When you start putting price points on there, you can see again how it is meeting your customer and client where they're at with their wallet, with their um, own business. May, they're not. They're not ready. They're not ready for a sales funnel. Okay, but I mean, they're, they might be. They might be getting ready for a website, and you're going to be the person that they call because they've read your blog post, they've purchased a small product from you. All right, I like her. I'd like, when the time comes, she's the one I'm gonna go back to, okay? So, generally speaking, the, this is the progression of a value ladder. You've seen some examples in transit but essentially, this is what we're going to be talking, you need to be talking about and thinking about for your own business. We're gonna have some sort of free or discount code up front. Can you have a lower priced product up front? Like, you know, $5 entry point or something? Sure. But everybody loves a freebie, okay? I mean, how many of you have gotten a coupon 
texted to you or emailed to you or sent to you in the mailbox and you get it and you're like, woo, $10 pizza Tuesday, I am there, you know? They got me in the door, then they upsold me on some cinnamon sticks, okay? So we're just doing the same thing with our businesses. Then I'd love to see you think about a lower priced offer. Now I put under $200, it can have multiple steps. Um, as you can see, other things have been, you know, like a, a $7 template, uh, then it goes up to 97, then maybe 197, just keep walking them up, okay? By the way, people like the number seven. I don't really know what that is, but if you didn't know that, like they love that, you know, odd numbers, great. Five used to be good, nine used to be good, seven's the hot number right now, people, so. <laughs> If it's a $7 offer or a 17, I'd really love to see that. So then we just keep walking them up. Got our medium priced offer. Then we've got the whole enchilada. Okay, whatever your biggest project is, that's where we're moving them to. Okay. Um, does anybody want to be brave enough and talk about it? What's, what's your business? If it hasn't been, if you're not a designer or a health coach, <laughs> we've already talked about some stuff. Value ladder that you have for your business. No? Okay. We'll warm up. That's okay. <laughs> All right. Here's an example of a value ladder for a um, business that I worked on. Okay. So I created a company for the voiceover industry that helped them with their marketing needs. Okay, my sister is a voiceover talent. She came to me and said, there is this huge need. Like, everybody needs you. They need, their, they need a website. They need all this help. So she and I created some products and packages to meet those voiceover talent where they were at in their entrepreneurial journey. This was an example of our value ladder. Okay, real life, this was what we did. So we gave away something. <clears throat> that we had a basic website package. Now I understand that this is a pretty, this is probably more than the $200, but the clientele that we were going after, um, they just needed some help. And we were doing like really cheap templated, like let's just get you live kind of thing. You have no presence and you have taken this training course and you need to get out there in the public. So we made this basic website package. Um, then they come back and they, you know, they're ready to brand themselves. We'd like to do a little bit more than just, you know, Sarah Morrison in Open Sans font, you know. Okay, let's make you a logo. Let's kind of do some stuff, a little more finessing. Heck yeah, I charge them to put that logo on their website. Okay, so, you know, that's what we did. And then we also took the branding implementation and said, all right, this package is now gonna take your logo and we're gonna create all your social media templates that you need for your YouTube cover and, um, your Facebook cover and any other thing you might need, we're gonna put all that together with your brand new branding and pass it off, okay? And we'll update your website with all your brand new branding. Because they really wanted a website but they weren't ready to invest in a whole branding package yet. So now they are, and then when they get there, they start getting a lot more audio demos. They start getting a lot more video demos. They want an additional page to showcase just their automotive voice. Then we upsell them to the advanced package, okay? And from there, we've got like additional coaching and training. Um, one of the things that we can mention, uh, I should mention like the yellow, the yellow boxes here, I've also taken into account a little bit of affiliate commission. So if you're working with affiliate marketing, think about how that can go into your value ladder. Like this basic website, it might not be that much, but if I can get them on my hosting, you know, maybe the host will give me $50. Or um, if I can get them on a recurring plan of some sort, an email service provider, there's lots of different affiliate marketing opportunities out there. So you can think about those in regards to your value ladder because maybe um, additional, val additional revenue is coming from the affiliate side, you know, and not necessarily from your client. Um, and then, you know, you just think about what are some other things you might have. I didn't quite know where these went, so we're just gonna put them off to the side, and I'm sure we're gonna play with those later, okay? So 
This is a real life example of how we built out our value ladder and priced it accordingly, sold it at that, met the client where they were at in their journey. Because some of the clients that we got already had a website, but they needed their branding. Some of the clients that we got had nothing. Some needed uh, you know, some hand holding and some training with what somebody else had built for them. So that's how we structured that business. A lot of times if you do any research or you Google value ladder, you're gonna come up with the phrase sales funnels, okay? And, and how do value ladders and sales funnels go together? I like to think that they're kind of like Lego pieces, but um, <laughs> value ladders uh, pieces are like the Legos and sales funnels are how you put the Legos together. So basically, in a nutshell, value ladders are what you're offering and sales funnels are how you are offering it. So you can have different steps in your value ladder. Like I had those kind of freebies and products off to the bottom. I didn't quite know what to do with those yet, but they will come into play, okay? So as you start kind of coming up with new ideas in your business and finding out that your client actually needs this or that price point might be a little too high something along those lines start shifting your value ladders around um, it, your website if built correctly is a sales funnel because each page is built to convert people to, to do something to subscribe to your newsletter um, to get a potential lead off a contact form or to actually buy a product so you can even think about your website like that so uh, when they by structuring your value ladder in a particular order when somebody comes across something and they say no like no I don't want that social those social media templates okay that's fine guess what i got another product for you i've got i've got something else to help you right where you're at so you're taking that no and you're going to turn it into uh capture a yes at some point okay now one of the um i didn't get the graphic on here but essentially a value ladder kind of starts as we saw from the lowest price point right up to the highest price point so it's kind of small to big when you think about sales funnels it's really big down to small, right? The, you want to capture the most at the top. So you're going to just get all your freebies, you know, capture those email addresses and then just keep moving them down until you get to, you know, your highest priced offer. So value ladders and sales funnels go hand in hand, but they are two different things. Just FYI. Okay. Now, how can understanding value ladders help make you more money and make your clients more money? So number one, understanding and using value ladders when building quotes for projects will help you generate more revenue. Okay, how do we do that? Because you can see the big picture you will now be able to offer additional suggestions and upgrades in your services based on their current <coughs> offerings and how you can see their business growing. So if you have an initial discovery call with somebody, I'm going to use website design as an example because that's what I do. Um, I'm gonna start talking with them about like, what does your business do? You know, okay, what do you want your clients to do when they land on your website? Um, where where do you see the direction going oh well you know what I've been working on a course for real estate agents and I, I really want to I don't know I've really been wanting to do that for a while okay well cool let's do that and I really want to do this and that so if you can take their ideas and their pieces and help them <coughs> see their own value ladder then they're gonna you know oh yes let's do that 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 sounds really good you know because then you can start to fill in the blanks say well have you thought about your freebie or a discount like how are you going to get people on your email list oh I didn't think about that well I'd be happy to help you out with that okay do you need help designing your ebook we got that we can help you out with that we'll t let's talk 
okay? Also, by offering business intensives for potential clients, you can help map out their strategy and implementation while getting paid to write your proposal. Has anybody, does anybody utilize this technique in their own business? Okay, so now not only, okay, so if you haven't, basically what this is is like, oh, this is really awesome. You know what? I offer a paid coaching session. Let's sit down and just map it all out, okay? You can take that plan and you can go work with somebody else or you can stay and work with me. I'll take the, you know, the business intensive charge off for you if you stay and work with my team, okay? It's a way of helping them, again, meet them where they're at in their business need. Maybe they're not quite ready for that whole entire sales funnel build, but they just need some help kind of getting all the pieces that are floating around in their brain down so that they can figure out what their value ladder looks like. So if you offer a business intensive or something like that, great, you know, um, you're now getting paid to share your knowledge of what a value ladder is, okay? Because they will be back to hire you for impl implementation and therefore generating more revenue for you. And the third way that understanding value ladders can help is because you will now be your client's guru in building an effective value ladder for their business. They've never heard this term before. You're going to explain it to them and you're going to talk, generate some brainstorming ideas. And, oh, that was it. Okay, I didn't have a how. I, I forgot that. Anyway, so you are now the uh, professional, you are the expert, and when it comes to all things value ladder and business growth, they're going to come back to you. Okay? Again, I said I talk fast. Nobody asked any questions yet, and I have a ton of time. So let's brainstorm a little bit. Does anybody have a client or an industry or you need some help with your value ladder? Anybody brave enough? Yes. Uh, photography. Photography. All right. Are you a photographer? You're a photographer and you want to build out your value ladder. Okay. Anybody want to jump in? I mean, I've got some ideas, but anybody else? Okay, we're going to sit. Yeah, I'm not looking at it. David's a photographer too, but I'm not going to call him. Okay, so. Who's your client? There you go. Who's your client? People. People. All right. Are they families? Families. Lifestyle families. photographer? Yeah, portrait. Yes, families, cool. kids. Do you go into their home or do they come to you? <laughs> Both. Newborn, I could come to them. Okay. Newborn? Kids, they could come to me. Kids, they could come to you? What do you think? I want some pictures of my horses. <laughs> Will you take pictures of horses? Sure. Okay. Yeah. For your car. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, she's trying to generate some leads for newborn, you know. Maybe spring is a really fun time for like baby season, right? Yeah. I don't know, like, or spring, like, oh, let's take pictures with the Easter Bunny. I don't know. Start a prom you, you could start with a promotion, right? The, one of the great things about capturing that people's email list is now you can start to kind of market to them and who your ideal client is. So when you work backward, and if your ideal client is families, you know, you want to get people on your email list that fit that description, right? Um, I would think a good, and people might tell me I'm wrong. Uh, one place, I should say this, there are a million ways to build a value ladder, okay? So just brainstorming and spitballing, I can say, hey, try this way, and it fails terribly, okay? Cool, try again. That's why we write content, that's why we have blog posts, that's why, you know, I'm like, oh, that coupon didn't work. People do not care that they get a free soda. You know, like, okay, let's try that again. Let's have kids eat free. Woohoo! That one went over a lot better. You know, so that's, that's the whole idea. Um, so let's just say, you know, you had an Easter promotion. Or, you know, like, come into my studio. We're going to do these. I've got a discounted, so the upfront, right? I'm going to do, like, uh, a discounted session. Uh, a mini session. Do you call them mini sessions, right? So that could be a good entry point for something. It's a low cost. It's a low cost outlay. Like you know, it's not a lot of commitment there, right? They are not paying you several hundred dollars to come and take a lifestyle shoot all day at their house. 
but you know what? I've seen your work. I've followed you on Instagram. I, I really, I like her. I'm going to go take my kids over there. So think about what you can do on the front end that might entice that person out of Instagram world or, you know, out of your email list to actually book with you. So maybe doing a mini session or uh, a coupon code or something like that. And then you just work your way on up, like um, depending on how you structure your pricing. So if an outdoor shoot is more expensive than an indoor shoot, if they come to your studio, it's less money than if you go to their house and do an all day lifestyle shoot, right? I'm guessing, okay. Um, I was helping my cousin who had a newborn about like a month ago and uh, she wanted to take pictures of her. And so one website I looked at was uh, writing about like a blog post about like iPhone photography. Mm -hmm. And so like that's one way to capture emails. So you can like talk about some tips, for example, about you know how to take good photos with your iPhone, mm -hmm. and then like the difference between uh, the DSLR, which is you know what you have, yeah. and uh, that quality versus like an iPhone, because I mean a lot of people have to mm -hmm. do that. So and what you want to in this particular case, I think what you mentioned about who's your client comes into play because if you're writing a blog post about what's the best DSLR lens to use. And I don't care, I just want somebody to take pictures of my baby, right? Like, I'm not necessarily going to read that. But because I have a newborn and I have an iPhone and we take lots of pictures, then that might capture my attention a little bit more. Make sure that you have a content upgrade in your blog post, which is a way for to capture their email address right there. Hey, you read this blog post, why don't you download my free PDF of... 25 best filters I've found, or you know, ways to make your Instagram baby pictures look great, or how to hashtag, I don't know, like how to hashtag so you can find your baby pictures later. Get my discount code on how to make a baby book. You know, whatever your client is and who you're speaking to, make that freebie a good one. And then get them on their email list and be like, hey, thanks for signing up for my, do you have a new baby? I offer newborn photography sessions. Did you know that? <laughs> I actually have a package special this month that if you book right now in the next 48 hours, here's your discount code. It's good for 48 hours. Okay. Then we're moving them up. Okay. That's not hand. Anybody? <laughs> Unique ideas also. Like people always want to, you know, they, they, I've seen uh, so many like newborn babies post the same way, mm -hmm. but they always want to like find new new ideas. Yeah. So just writing about that also might help you. Thank you. Yeah. And let's say you have some people that are giving some of the first lower offers that you have, but maybe they don't have enough. Cause they're a big family on a budget, so they can't go to your medium price offer. We well, can downsell them an affiliate offer for a camera that you signed up to be an affiliate for. And get some income that way, and then maybe you can have a class where you teach people how to use the DSLR part of the camera. Lego pieces. <laughs> Just build the house a different way, and if that one doesn't work, build it a different way. Try it that way. Yes. Another um, bottom rung would be, I think, a giveaway. Yes. People love uh, people who give. Mm -hmm. So Mother's Day is coming up. Why? You know, have a contest for the mother who deserves a, a special package. Work with a salon or other groups to give a big package, and then you're absorbing all the this information, and then you're also the hero in giving a, a mother who is deserving a <coughs> free package. So therefore, you're building even people who aren't they see you as a, a giver. So therefore, you're building loyalty. Yes. Absolutely, I so think that that's a great a idea. And then your mini session, a paid mini mm -hmm. session could be the next room. Yeah, no, that's a great idea. People love value. You know, if they think that you are giving value or they are getting value in some way, they're definitely going to exchange their email address for that. Later on, they're gonna exchange some dollars for that. And especially that point that you mentioned, like just goodwill. Like, you know, I like that. That is a good company. Like, look what they did for that nice family. You know, all those moms, you know, <laughs> people will remember that. Okay. Then you become top of mind. Yes, absolutely. Um, I put together um, a freebie for you guys today 
called 25 Value Ladder Ideas. And you can pick that up at sarahkdesign.co backslash WordCamp along with the slide deck. But one of the things I talk about in that freebie, which is interesting, is have you ever, have you ever thought about a value ladder for a funeral home? You know, um, <laughs> how do you get those clients? But it's one of the ways that you can just think about the world is by being helpful and by offering that value. So the example that for a funeral home is you're gonna to speak to the people that are still living, obviously. Um, and you know, maybe the freebie or some fun thing that you have as a resource is um, how to write a great obituary or ways to you know remember in your everyday life or something that speaks in a very positive way to this experience that they're going through. Now it seems, it, it, it's simply the idea that sometimes it's the goodwill that's gonna bring those people back, okay? So when your basement is filling with sludge, like I'm not necessarily gonna go out and Google who's the cheapest plumber in town, but I am gonna remember that you know, I got a mailer in the mail that talked about, you know, offered a coupon code or somebody on Facebook was giving away something. And I'm like, oh, that's the, oh, you know what? I totally remember that one guy. Let's go call him. You know, it's not because I Googled their sheet, but it's still in my mind because of the value that they provided. Okay. So, I mean, there's all sorts of industries that I had, I had such fun coming up with that 25. So. <laughs> Yeah, funeral home is on the list. So good luck with that one. Maybe you'll get a client one day that needs that information. You can just market that to uh, retirement living. Yeah. <laughs> I wish I, yeah, where, I was just, I was, I could have come up with 30. I should have put that on the list, retirement home. Yeah. Any other questions? Could you go back to this, what you were talking about with business intensity? Yeah. Um, so I think it's just, one back. I mean, basically, okay, so a business intensive is another way, like a strategy set, a paid strategy call, basically. So here's an example for what I use in my own business. I get on a call with the, for a cons free consultation and quickly realize this is not just a, a quick one page website build. Like you have a lot of moving pieces. You are just Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We, you know, I send them an email and I let them know I, I had a great time chatting with you or you know, you upsell them on the phone even. Um, basically, I have a strategy session that I think would be perfect for you. So there, I charge, uh, you know, X amount of dollars, whatever you wanna set. I get, uh, they get a one hour strategy session with me. We map out their value ladder and, we ma and I map out the steps and then I deliver uh, a PDF like game plan to them like they get a deliverable at the end and it shows like here's your value ladder here's all your offerings this is your sales funnel this is where you email, you know email sequence if it is um, in a very large website only project you could talk about like the, the site map or user experience like how we're gonna break this down to achieve the goals that you want to achieve and those goals are going to come out in the strategy session. You know, you can ask, you know, we can really break down like, okay, what are you trying to do? What's your ultimate business goal? Okay, what do you have in place now? You know, do you have a value ladder? Do you have a sales funnel? You know, and then kind of take it from there. And people are paying you for your brain. And so at the end, you have an hour call, two hours, depending on what you think it will take. And then you have, then you have to create the deliverable. Um, and that's a, something that I utilize in my own <coughs> business and value ladder system. So, and then it gives you that game plan. You've already, you're getting paid to, to do the work. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, they paid you to write a proposal, basically. <coughs> yes? It's, it's a great way to interview a client, too, because mm -hmm. they miss three calls, you schedule a call three times and they don't, they don't get on the phone or they're pressing up a blue streak constantly, you know. It gives you a point to like, here's the PDF, good luck, mm -hmm. you know, maybe yeah. you find another somebody else to go exactly. to. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, my schedule filled up. I, hmm, I'd, I'd love to refer you to some people. 
Am I the only one that does that? Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I have a more of a crowdsourcing. Oh, please, yes. Sure oh, we have, we have time. Not, but it's about uh, affiliate. Yeah. How do you get affiliates? Like, how do you, how do, you do that? Okay. Uh, many programs offer affiliate offerings. Okay. Even. Uh, Pippin has a WP affiliate plugin, right? <laughs> so my friend April is here in the audience today. Raise your hand, April. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna put you on the spot. April's zone of genius is affiliate marketing. Like that is what she does. She has courses in it and uh, runs Facebook groups just to help you figure out how to make money without doing anything. So basically, um, <laughs> that's a blog post. That is a blog post. So um, basically, affiliate marketing is just kind of a way to um, get recurring revenue from somebody else other than your client. So a lot of ways that I do it as a website designer is through hosting companies offer affiliate programs, email service providers can offer affiliate programs, um, plugins offer affiliate programs, um, software platforms offer affiliate programs. So you just Google affiliate programs in your area. Not even an area, like, uh, well, wait, what do you do? I mean, I run an advertising agency, but I also am starting a wellness blog. Okay, so for, I would say affiliate programs that you're quite familiar with would be like health products. A lot of health pro uh, physical <laughs> products offer affiliate programs, right? Sign them up and you get a cut. That's that's the general idea. And so generally there does already exist one. You don't just call them and say, hey, I'm going to promote you. You would be shocked at <laughs> what affiliate programs exist. April. Almost everything has an affiliate program. Target has an affiliate program. Yeah. Yeah. Starbucks has an affiliate you program. So who I'm there. Yeah, right? You know, REI, Moose Jaw, all those have. Google is your friend. Yeah. Google. Google the company or yeah. product. Yeah. yeah. Thanks. And it's just however it applies best to your industry. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the health and wellness space, you can also um, partner with or sell courses from other people that you follow or approve of that would help your clientele. So, for example, um, again, April is working with uh, a health coach right now, and we were kind of brainstorming the other day about her, and it's like, well, she works with health coaches, right? She coaches coaches, but she has a whole library of protocols like th hypothyroidism and stuff. So they can sell her products to their people and they make an affiliate commission. And also if you refer out work like you was not of your, um, not a good fit for a potential client, you can set up with other people that you network with for referral fees, I consider that an affiliate. Exactly. Yeah. Finders program, referral fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Certainly. Yes. Okay. So a group brainstorm here. I'm a brand new blogger. I just started my blog in November. It's at midlifeescape.com. It's just a hobby blog. It's me saying I'm turning 50 in two years. I want to take a career sabbatical and travel the world with my family for six months. So it's just the journey of me saying, okay, how do I save for, plan, take this midlife escape, come back, you know, be responsible, go back to work, can't, you know. So I'm, so right now it's a hobby, and I've just started, I'm posting every other Tuesday morning, and um, so I'm trying to think about monetization strategies. Like, I have a day job, I do know, you know, I pay my bills by going to work full time at something else. And I'm building on the side, but I am thinking seriously about, hey, how could I monetize this, or what opportunities could there be down the road for turning this into a business? So, any ideas about what I could offer? I thought of eBooks or e-courses or membership programs where people who want to also take a trip kind of get together on group calls and plan it out together. I don't know thoughts, ideas on how what a good monetization strategy would be for that type of site that's just a hobby blog in its early, early, early stages. Have you heard of travel hacking? Yeah. So maybe you find a bunch of resources for travel hackers. Okay. That's the plan. And then like there's great rewards credit cards <coughs> yeah. or mm -hmm. I'm 
there's a bunch of products that we can mm -hmm. offer um, around that goal of like travel hacking at the for your okay. target niche. Um, for my understanding, um, you have like an audience that like you trying to take like a sabbatical from work, and so I think uh, travel hacking is one, and also like wellness programs. So <coughs> affiliate marketing with those kinds of things. So try to get to know like programs for uh, you know people trying to get back in shape because you know they've been tired from work or something like that. You know. I think it's important to keep in mind her kind of this session there are there are many ways to monetize but I want you to think of that next step too of like what is the step for your customer and client don't just throw affiliate links and blog posts all the time okay we want to keep them moving on this journey with you and keep, and having them grow through your process and the, and the offerings that you have and just you know throwing Amazon affiliate links in a blog post is right. not it's going it's not a, it's not long term yeah it's not very strategic and I think some of this will evolve as I journey through this myself there will be things that will come to me but absolutely um, I see a YouTube channel in the future mm -hmm. <laughs> especially as you know you've, you've oh, got yeah, that two years down. and then when you go on the road we need to follow you trip will be, yeah. yeah we need to follow you yeah. it'll be a lot more fun then years from now when we're out traveling yes so um, speaking of YouTube mm -hmm. um, have you incorporated video into your ladders that are regular like, like a YouTube, YouTube yeah. channel yeah um, I have not other people have um, anybody done that April's working on her YouTube channel Just, uh, Instagram really at this point yeah, I think it's probably more awareness than affiliate link. I don't know that I mean, there's, you can monetize your YouTube channel, but you become the expert. And I think that's kind of the whole point. So there's several people that I follow on video that do like the free, 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 yeah. free, and I love them. Yeah. You know, like I don't even know I need to Google. I'm just going to go look up Jessica Stanford for you, you know, YouTube or Trello or something like that. And then immediately I get funneled into her other things. Like, oh, she had an upsell for her Trello course and her free YouTube video? Dang it, I bought it. You know, why? Because it, it fit the need that I had right at that exact moment. So she is ready for me in my, in my value ladder. Like, I'm ready to invest now, and she's got a product that meets me where, where my need is. And so that's the way to think about it. It's not, this, you know, like, overall just the monetization of the videos but meeting me right, exactly. yeah That's where I'm at sure. yeah so you yeah. could use that to just offer lots and lots of value I have to say like for myself I've been creating a ton of content for my mythical idea you know my mythical creature that actually reads my content I don't even know who does I you know but um I just like like hey I learned this hack this is so awesome did you guys know that you can like literally, did you know that you can send yourself, um, if you take a picture on your phone, you can send it straight to your Trello board? I did not know that, so okay. That I mean, it was just one of those, like, did you guys know that? I don't know, I'm just putting it out into the universe. Maybe it'll come back to me at some point. And so when I do a content upgrade and a blog post, like, hey, you can buy my ebook for all other 100 Trello hacks for just $17, you know? Like, I mean, it's that kind of thing, so offering the value and then just stepping them up. So, anybody? Thank you so much for coming today, guys. I appreciate it. <laughs> Go grab your value ladder ideas if you want to and copy the slide deck. Oh, okay. See, yep.